Hello everybody, my name is Chuko Fili and welcome back to another episode of Devs on Devs in Production. Today we'll be talking about Google Cloud Error Reporting. Now, Google Cloud Error Reporting is a tool from Google that allows you aggregate all your crashes and errors from your cloud-based systems into a simple and easy to use dashboard. Um, it also integrates with your third-party project management tools or maybe issue trackers, which allows you from the dashboard, keep track of everything that's going on. You and your teammates can be assigned and you can all resolve issues together. Now, I guess I'm speaking too much. Let's just jump into a demo. I'll show you how to set it up and use it and simulate an error and we can view it on the Google Cloud dashboard. To get error reporting up and running, we need to install the packages for error in Google error reporting. So you can go to google.com, uh, cloud.google.com forward slash error reporting, visit the documentation, and then check the framework in which you use. I'm using Node.js. You, if you don't have the sample repository, you can always get the sample repository at github.com, check out Philly forward slash stackdriver dash example. Now this is the third part in the series, the previous two videos, which I talked about cloud debugging and cloud trace or stackdriver trace and stackdriver debugging. The links are below and you can read up on that or watch the videos. All right, make sure that your error reporting API is enabled and then you can then prepare your Node.js application to be able to start reporting errors. You always, you can always read all this uh, documentation, uh, you know, to give you more specific drill down information. But right now, what I'm going to do is just install the packages, right? I will probably only do this for the back end, and I, I don't think I need to do it for the front end. I, I can, but you know, just to show you in the interest of this tutorial, I'll just work for the front end. Yeah, and add. They should install the latest version of error reporting. It'll configure in the root as usual. Latest version. And what I'm doing here is I've initialized as the document per the documentation. I've initialized the error reporting library. Uh, I instantiated the client, and then I can go ahead and report that something is broken. So, since I've already done that, this reporting mode telling uh, the error reporting module that it doesn't matter whether it's staging, uh, production or the you know, debugging environment that it should always report the errors. Uh, I'm going to make a quick modification here uh, so that everything is the same. Okay, so per the Google error reporting documentation, I have added or initialized the error reporting uh, instance in short form, of course, and then I've attached it to a global error handler. Now, I also have a global error function handler for my Google, my um, Express, Node.js Express application. So what I will do here is add the report option to the error that was passed. And that's pretty much it. So what I've said here is this is where all errors are handled for my application. So you do the same thing for your own app or your own framework. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying log the error out, the stat trace out to the console, and then report this to Google error. Uh, to Google, the Google error, um, Google error reporting API, and then also respond with a 500 error if this was a request. Now, some things to note. Typically, when you use the error reporting, uh, you know, or when you use Stackdriver in general, every error or error-like syntax that is spat, is spat out to your SD out or to your console, Google Stackdriver would actually pass that off to Google error reporting by default. And this is without any configuration or adding any, you know, initializing the Google error reporting library and so on and so forth. It will actually do all of that automatically. So technically you may not need to add the library. Once you 
have any errors and you use the proper error logging format and you send it to SD out from history serves me correctly. Google stack driver will pick it up for, and send it to error reporting and then show that up in the error reporting console. But then if you have to want to have more control uh, and know, you know, what context it is, you know, which environment was the service name, what's the version number, all these things help because when Google stack driver picks up the error without you telling it where it's coming from and what application, it will just make it a generic error and it might be difficult to drill down or know where the error is coming from. But in this case, Right now, by adding the module uh, or adding the client library, you have control over every single reporting or error style or every single bit of information that needs to be sent to Google. So these are the only two changes I need to make. Uh, as usual, pass the service context, and then you can always read the documentation for more options you can pass to this initializer. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna update the application, push to the repository, and then deploy uh, the application. I'll speed this up. One thing I want to point out is in the backend application, I have a route which I have used to throw errors, and this will throw a global error which Express will catch and should feed to this function, which should console, log it to the console and then report it to Google Cloud, right? Let's try that out. First things first is I would open up my cons Google Cloud console and while that's opening up, I would simulate my first error. All right, so this is a simulated error. Now, of course, I um, this is a 500 error and I know that it's probably difficult to know that this is a 500 error, right? The easiest way to go would be to go to Google Stack Driver uh, logging and check errors. And you see this is the error from the root file index.js at line 14, which is line 14. So obviously our errors are working perfectly. It is spitting the errors out and it's logging the errors to the console. So let's check the errors interface and let's see if it actually was reported in the stack driver error interface. As you see, that's the first error we see right there and we can click to see the error it shows us stack trace as usual this is the formatted version this is the raw version this is the formatted version but as you've seen beautifully you can see it has picked up all the contextual data stack driver back in production the environment the version number and that was because we tagged everything in our application in the root so this was how we told google stack driver uh, error reporting module where all the errors are and then you can see frequency of the errors what time of day how many times did it occur and if every, if your debugger is set up correctly clicking on this link will take you to the exact spot in your file where the error happened uh, let's go back to the error reporting your faces two more things that I wanted to talk about now uh, outside of all the extra information, first scene and so on and so forth, the occurrences and all of that, it gives you the option to resolve them. You can acknowledge so that this doesn't keep bothering you um, in case maybe it's a minor error. But if it's a major error, you can actually link it to an issue tracker of your uh, choosing whatever service or service you use. Um, you can actually resolve it or you can mute it if it's an error that no one needs to pay attention to. Um, and you know that that's pretty much it now the other thing that you can do is you could also turn on notifications which the web browser would then notify you if there are issues but there's also alerting you can use the alerting feature the alerting feature would send you emails once you have a frequency of um, 
um, um, um, errors coming up or, you, you know, just like PagerDuty or one of those other services, all you have to do is set up alerting. Uh, I think I'll do a tutorial about alerting uh, uh, later on. Uh, but you can always Google. I mean, there's it's, Google has quite a lot of products. So Google, go to the product website and look for the error reporting. Or actually, alerting is under monitoring. So I think that's under monitoring, uh, which should, should be here. So there's there we go. You can click on it, give it the criteria, set up the scopes, and then say, oh, anytime you see an error, notify me. Another way you can keep track of errors that show up, just in case you don't want to get bombarded with all the errors, you can use the Google Cloud console app the google cloud console app is in the play store the google play store and also in the ios store search for google cloud console download it install it sign in and then you have access to all the uh, features that you probably have in the cloud well a miniaturized version so you'd have access to alerting you'd have access to profiler you have access to trace and uh, you know whatever it is that you need to be on top of you can get it on the go if you're this you know ict administrator or maybe you're the lead or the or maybe you are the technical lead uh and that wraps it up thank you guys for watching if you found this video helpful please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification icon beside it so that you get notified every single time i upload a new video until the next time catch you in the next one